I'm Haley. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. I had to start off by saying I loved this movie. Space as like a concept really freaks me out. And I was just totally enthralled by the whole thing. So congratulations on that. Well, thank you. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it, even if like, you might have felt a bit tense. I was 100% on the edge of my seat. There were multiple times when my dogs looked at me like, are you okay? Because I was like <laughs> gasping, screaming, um, the whole nine yards. Um, mm -hmm. But it's such a unique profession, like being an astronaut, right? And And to convey that so well, so convincingly, like, how did you train for this kind of role? And and I'm also really curious, does your background as a dancer, did that help you at all in any way? Well, I mean, when this project came to me after um, I had made West Side Story, I had made The Prom, and I was in the process of making Schmigadoon. So when this script came to me, I was so enthralled by what Nick Schaefer had done um, and I loved that it was so different from anything that I knew the world was going to see me do at that point. Um, and I thought it would be a great challenge to like really dig in and and try and figure out what is that, who is that person who functions so much from this science-based fact-driven, like kind of black and white way of thinking because it's very not me. <laughs> I don't uh, think that she's so black and white, though. I mean, I she, feel like she, she becomes less. I think she becomes less. The way when I first approached the work, I feel like she knew what she was doing, and that's what it was, and da da da, da. And the circumstances she finds herself in, um, I won't necessarily say it softens her, but it definitely like broadens her horizons. I think it's a person that uh, made made decisions that she never thought she would have to make um, as a result of the moments she found her, she found herself in, if that makes sense. But uh, the one thing that I thought would be helpful, and it turned out it was helpful in the making of this film was my dance background. Um, I think when I said yes, I had this idea they were just gonna put me in a zero gravity tank and then shoot that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we, uh, Myself and my colleagues, we trained for about two weeks um, to be able to work in harnesses. So we had we all had harnesses on that were fastened around our hips and then connected to two tethers. And they were hooked up to a gantry system and we all had to learn to fly um, individually and uh, together. Um, so it, was, it took a great deal of time and um, some very specific choreography and a whole team of people behind the scenes to help us accomplish what you see as simulated zero gravity. That is so cool. It's like what my community theater production of Peter Pan wished it was with the <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like y'all know those harnesses from back in the community theater days. Yep. Um, I feel like that two week training must have contributed to something I noticed pretty early on in the film. There was this really organic camaraderie and chemistry with this group. Can you tell me about how y'all worked to develop that? Yeah, well, we shot the movie during the pandemic. So yeah, um, so in order to to make the film at all, we, we followed copious safety protocols and then we also lived in the same uh, in the same complex, right? So you know there was sort of an inherent implied trust that by showing up we were going to take care of each other, and and so in a way I feel like art kind of imitated life. We you know these are six people. We come from very different walks of life, um, and we just had to become family very quickly. And it, this was also an indie film. So it's not like we took months to shoot this film. We It maybe took six weeks, I think, something like that. Um, so it was very fast and furious. And so I think when you realize you're on a time crunch, <laughs> you, to, you know, really meet the other person where they're at. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I feel like maybe it was easier for you and John Gallagher Jr. as two Broadway vets. Oh, okay, they're kids. Yeah. <laughs> Did y'all ever swap any like 
Broadway stories on set in between takes or what was that like being the two Broadway people? You know, we actually really didn't. We didn't really swap war stories, but I feel like, you know, he did have his guitar with him. And so he would play, or if we were hanging out by the beach or something, sometimes he'd have his guitar with him and he'd play and sing and, or, and sometimes we'd like sing songs together every once in a while. But, um, we were, we just literally kind of like hung out and piled around. Like I remember there was one night we were all hanging out with, at Christmas Cena's place and just staring at the moon. I think it might've been a full moon and just eating dark chocolate, you know, he loves dark chocolate. Um, oh <laughs> you know, just like ha- everybody, you know, sharing an adult beverage and talking about life and look and the pursuit of happiness. I love that. No, and I really do think that comes across in the film um, so clearly. Like even with your character, she is apprehensive and then quickly everyone makes her feel at home. Um, and and especially I think Nika is a big part of that. Can you tell me about their their relationship throughout the film? Yeah, well, Nika's played by, you know, the incredible, incredible actress, Masha. My God, if you are not familiar with her work, get into it. I think she's a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. Um, But these two characters, you know, I think Nika is, you know, she's very confident. She's been on the ISS, she knows what she's doing. And I think, you know, uh, Masha herself is Russian and there is an, an implied confidence and it, it can feel kind of aggressive, but it's really comes from this, uh, this very love, loving, compassionate place and they become friends. That's Nika is a true friend and you, you get to see what love looks like through, through Dr. Foster's eyes. She gets to like watch love between characters um and then you know when shit really hits the fan you know uh these two women are kind of the ones trying to talk sense into the men folk you know there are different tactics used in extraordinary circumstances (laughs) and i think these two women are really trying to hatch a plan that can that can actually save lives um one is a bit more extreme than the other but But I think the women kind of are the heart of the piece. Yeah, I love that. And kind of for my last question, going towards the love of it all, something that I noticed that was such a quick part of the film, but something that I found to be very impactful was that your character was queer, but in a way that was just so normalized. It wasn't this big to do. And I'm curious for you as as both an actress and a queer woman in real life, what was that like for you? Oh, I I loved it. It's part of what I loved about the piece. I loved that, you know, her her queer her queerness was not a plot point. You know what I mean? Her queerness did not drive the plot forward. It just was a part of a part of her identity. It's and I think I hope we are moving towards a time where that is how we can actually function as a society, where we are not as humans defined by our our queerness or our sexuality like I'm I will sit here and tell you all day long I am much more than my queer identity I promise you that yes (laughs) oh you know (laughs) it it might make me more interesting to some people but um that's she's not a one-trick pony she's literally Uh, an astronaut (laughs) literally an astronaut like the queerness is not nearly as interesting as the science (laughs) like make it make sense you know what I mean? So um, I love that actually. That's amazing. And well, before we hop off, I'm very curious to know that after all of this, would you ever consider going to space yourself? Oh, no. <laughs> um, now that I've, you know, done the research, <laughs> I um, I would like to maintain my own romanticized idea of the cosmos and um, now that it is very plain to me that the human body is actually not really meant to be up there, I will be staying here and focusing on saving the planet we live on. I love that. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Congratulations again on such an amazing film. I've already told all my friends and family about it. Like as soon as I ended the film, I was like, you guys, 
I can't wait for you to watch this. So I'm so excited to see what you're up to next. And um, thank you again. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you very much. Awesome. Y'all have a great rest of your day.